You're watching the late night news. Now today is the 65th anniversary of the end of World War II. The war that changed the world, changed your future and mine. Today veterans along with American and Russian diplomats came together in Chennai to pay their respects to the brave hearts who died during the course of World War II. This rare gathering paid rich tributes at the war memorial to the soldiers and the men and women who laid down their lives to defend the nation in the Second World War. Organizers of the ceremony said the end of the war was a victory over fascism. Our Indians who did lay the, down their lives also in many countries and uh, it is a gratifying to note many of our Indians fought the war even in chapters like Italy and laid down their lives. Their graves lie there today. But we remember them today. The American Vice Consul in Chennai and the Consul General of the Russian Federation in Southern India paid respects to the war heroes along with others. As you know, we played a large part in uh, World War II and uh, we're glad we played a large part in helping in that along with our partners, the Indians and the, the Russians here today as well who all played a major role and uh, made sacrifices in order to promote peace around the world. We are celebrating the 65th anniversary of the great victory in the World War II over fascism and Nazism. Indian Society for Culture and Friendship, which organized the event, stressed that it was important that we pay respects to the people who lay down their lives for the country. There should be a thought and there should be an education given to the children this is the day when you know we are we are bowing down our head towards the people who have given their life to them for, for our sake when you say country it's us it is a small get together to remember a great occasion the end of a seven year long war and those who died in the battles to bring peace to the world in chennai with peer mohammed jason tosh for ndtv hindu well, India have done no service to themselves after they suffered a humiliating 49-run loss to Australia. Dhoni and his men are in serious danger of missing the semis at a third consecutive ICC event after this crushing loss. They now need to win both their remaining encounters against West Indies and Sri Lanka if they have a chance of qualifying for the semis. Dirk Nanis not only took care of his daredevil captain Gautam Gambhir, but also took out India's other opener Murli Vijay. Suresh Rana had 100 versus South Africa in the previous game, but here he fell for just 5. India stuttering at 17 for 3. It only got worse. Nanis came up with a great delivery to get Yuvraj, and India in tatters at 23 for 4. Captain MS Dhoni thought of targeting the Aussie weak link, but Stephen Smith got the wicket and India at 37 for 5. Dhoni chose to play 8 batsmen, but with the score at 50, India had already lost 7 of them. Rohit Sharma was the only one who emerged with his reputation intact. Sharma's unbeaten 79 of 46 almost gave hopes of a miracle. At one stage, he took 58 of 22 balls with six sixes. But Australia were too good, winning by 49 runs, leaving India with the unenviable task of beating West Indies and Sri Lanka. No wonder then that the fans were missing these players. Well, the batsman may have let him down, but Dhoni was quick to point a finger at his bowlers, especially Ravinder Jadeja, for his one over in which he was, in fact, two overs over which he was hit for six sixes by David Warner. Take a look. I think, you know, it all started with a couple of overs where, which went for 40-odd runs, and that was very crucial because before that, we were bowling really well. Uh, I think that was the start of the momentum that was needed in, in a T T20 format. After that, I think Watson and Warner, they batted really well and took, us, took the game away from us. For the last few overs, uh, it was brilliant from the fast bowlers. Uh, I think, you know, because they were looking to get 190 or 200-odd runs, so to restrict them to 180 was quite a good task by the bowlers. Well, the post-IPL Commissioner Lalit Modi is planning to take legal action now against England and Wales Cricket Board Chairman Giles Clarks and sue him in the UK for defamation. This comes after Modi was slapped a fresh show cause notice earlier this week by the BCCI for allegedly planning a rebel T20 league in England. BCCI Secretary and Lalit Modi's arch rival N. Srinivasan said that the board issued the show cause notice after it received an email from ECB Chairman Clark. The show cause notice referred to Modi's March 31st meeting in Delhi with representatives of English counties such as Yorkshire, Lancashire and Walkershire, in which he had mooted, apparently, allegedly mooted the idea of floating a rebel league in England. Well, Sanya and Shoeba back in the bride's hometown, Hyderabad, not just back in the country, but back in the news too. 
but for all the wrong reasons. Less than a month after her controversial wedding, Sanya Mirza is back in action at Hyderabad's Lal Bahadur Stadium. And watching her in action are Habib Shoaib Malik and dad Imran Mirza. But it seems wherever the celebrity couple goes, controversy follows. Shoaib Malik's appearance at Hyderabad's Gymkhana grounds for a practice session provoked more than just excitement. Shoaib Malik ne kada gura mana deshamla adi kokunda. Adi durudrustam mari yechye BC se ek anubandha gona twenty sangal lo vachi rajmaral ta adam ne de idik shaminchran dineram. The Hyderabad Cricket Association was not available for comment, but the criticism would certainly not be music to the ears of the newlywed couple. In Hyderabad, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. Well, that's a wrap on this bulletin. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep watching NDTV.